Welcome to Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from Commando.com with a K. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O. Hey, before we get started really quick, we'd love it if you'd hit the subscribe button so you get these podcasts delivered every week. And scams are hitting military families hard, but they're not the only ones. We'll have that story a little bit later. Also, uh, Ben was not here last week, so we went camping and we've got some tech stuff that you're going to absolutely love on Ben's uh, product review this week. Hey, Kim is at the hospital with her mom again today, unfortunately. We wish them both the very best and our thoughts and prayers are with them. But for now, we start with the news. So Twitter gave blue checkmark verification to a bunch of fake accounts. What's that all about, Ben? Well, the blue checkmark, that's the badge that you've been verified on social media sites like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. But even public figures aren't guaranteed the checkmark. And they're pretty much an impossible, you know, kind of status symbol if you have a basic user account. And after a four-year break, Twitter finally started accepting applications for the checkmark again back in May. But this week, they had to take back the symbol granted only to a chosen few because they were for fake accounts. Womp womp. Yeah. It's uh, six accounts all created on the same day in mid-June with the same followers, no tweets. Yeah, that's not suspicious, right? Right. The best part, one of these verified accounts was for a cat called (laughs) Anne Lamislar. (laughs) <laughs> a cat, yeah. It just it said the official Twitter account for Anne Lamislar. Wasn't even Grumpy Cat or something. Yeah, no, just, I mean, it's this cute kitten, I guess. But, <laughs> yeah, it turns out this handful of, of accounts was part of some malicious group of over a 1,000 accounts making up this whole spam botnet. And Twitter might not have noticed if it wasn't for a data scientist who pointed the whole thing out. But they've since removed the account saying they mistakenly approved the verification applications. They're just not saying how the mistake happened. You know, inside job, that wouldn't be the first time, but who's to say? Anyway, that verified cat had about a 1,000 followers before the account was shut wow. down. Followers probably just as real as the cat, but still. <laughs> probably. <laughs> wow, so they've got a huge problem. They've got a huge, that says that they've got a huge problem with a bunch of phonies open up Twitter accounts, right? Sounds like oh, Twitter. They, yeah, they've always <laughs> had the phony problems. Now they're just getting the check mark too. And we've got a new rollable, I mean, who can live without rollable TVs? We've got a new one. Yeah, and I don't mean a TV on wheels. <laughs> oh, we've, a TV had, stand. Wait yeah, a we've had no, no, I don't mean that. So, no, this is LG. It was uh, last year, the year before, I can't remember. But at CES, one of those years, LG showed off. It's a big old box that you sit on the floor or mount to the ceiling, and a TV screen actually unrolls out of it. Yes, I remember and that. And it hides, yeah. Kim so, went crazy about yeah, that Yeah, she still it's talks cool. about it. Well... <laughs> Good news for Kim. <gasps> the time has come. The time has come. So they, The yeah. price has come down from $50,000. Uh, no, no, but you can get it. <laughs> so the prototype was actually 2018, but it's a 65-inch 4K set, all these features. And as of next month, you live in the U.S., you can order it. Guess the price. Oh. It's not cheap. $42,000. I'm going to say a little bit less than that. I'm going to say $28,000. Okay. Final answers? Yes. No. $100,000. Oh. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hmm, thought you luxury said good car, news for Kim. or <laughs> right. well, good news for Kim because she can get it if she wants <laughs> it. It's true. available. So I didn't say the price was good news. <laughs> so yeah, pre-orders uh, apparently open in August. Uh, looks like there's already an add to cart button on the on LG's <laughs> website. So there you go. If you want the uh, the TV that'll unroll from your ceiling, or and you have a spare. Hundred thousand dollars, and you have an extra hundred k laying around. Yeah, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. So we're all gonna get one. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. Maybe Yay. two. Maybe well, two. <laughs> this is what I'm thinking about Christmas presents for you guys. <laughs> oh my! Yeah, that's you the shouldn't kind have, of guy I am. but please do. <laughs> <laughs> Big changes coming to Ring security cameras, Allie. Yes, after nine years in business, end-to-end encryption is finally here for Ring. That means if you enable it, only you are able to see your video streams on an iPhone or Android that you enrolled with your account. That means Ring and Amazon, its parent company, can't access your footage even if they really, really want to. This is really good news for your privacy. If you've always had that, you know, nagging feeling that maybe somebody could see your security cameras, you should go in and do something about it. Now, you do need to enable it. You have to opt in to get end-to-end encryption. Pretty funny how that works. Mm -hmm. Sidewalk, Amazon's, you know, that shared Wi-Fi network, Mm -hmm. that was opt-out Yet end-to-end encryption is opt-in. Okay. Uh, 
Anyway, it's available now in the Ring app. I am not even going to try to go through all the instructions here because you're not going to remember them, but we have everything on commando.com. Just search for Ring. Keep in mind, you need an iPhone that is running iOS 12 or later or an Android running Android 8 or later. Every single Ring camera is not supported, but all, you know, all the newer ones. So if you have any of the doorbell, the doorbell pro, the pro two, the elite, the wired, some of the spotlight cams, the floodlight cams and the stick up cams. I did mention sidewalk. Your reminder, uh, we've talked about this a lot with Amazon Echoes and have told you to go into your Alexa app and opt out. Well, you need to do the same thing if you only have ring cameras because some of those are also auto enrolled into Amazon sidewalk program. So that's fun. Uh, Open up your ring app and you can opt out there. Again, we have all the steps on commando.com. Search ring, you'll find both those articles and you can get yourself a little more secure. We've talked about the uh, police getting access to ring cams as well. Does this mean that they no longer have that access or is that something different? Yeah, so it's it's always been that they have to ask for the footage unless you've previously said, yes, I will share my footage with you. So this is a you know, an extra step in between. Um, that footage is always yours. You don't have to hand it over. And, you know, well, I thought there were police departments that just had access to it just because you put the ring on your front door. No, it, it never quite. They they had the ability to reach out directly to you. Now the change they made within the last couple of months, as far as I, I can recall, they they have to be more transparent and they can put out a message to like a certain area requesting video and anybody can come forward and say, hey, yes, I, you can look at the video that may have happened in the same area as whatever you're looking at. Yeah, it used to be that you might get a message just to you or an email or whatever that says, hey, we want access to your footage. And you might feel like, oh, I have to do this because the police are asking. Uh, so sure, yeah. there is a step in between that. And now this, this end-to-end encryption is, you know, is a good thing for, for security footage, for sure. Coming up in a few minutes, help finding a lost phone. Oh, we've all had that happen, right? Don't remember what happened to it. I've lost my apartment before. I oh, couldn't of find it for a couple of hours. <laughs> Plus, brand new or not true is just ahead. It's Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from commando.com. Welcome back to Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from commando.com. Brand new or not true is just ahead. We've got one real, two fake products. First of all, if you've ever lost your phone, well, we've got some tips for you. Yeah, this is exactly the scenario that you were talking about, Mike. If you lose your phone at home, what do Mm -hmm. you do? If there's somebody else at home, great. You can just say, hey, call me, and you listen for your phone. Alexa, call my phone. That's what we're talking about today. So if you can't find it, Alexa can help you out. We talk about Echoes a lot here. One, because so many people have them, and two, they're just really helpful for stuff like this. You need to enable a skill called Find My Phone. You'll go through, set it up, and then you can just say, like you said, Alexa, find my phone. The first time you do it, though, you will have to read off a code that goes to your phone. They'll text it to you. So make sure you do this before you actually lose your phone. And then this is a really fun bonus. You guys know about IFTTT, right? Yes. No. Okay, so it's this really cool thing. You can basically trigger something to happen on one of your smart devices based on something else that happens. So maybe it's when the temperature goes over 100 degrees, your AC kicks on. Awesome. Yeah, that already happens with your Nest, but you get the point. Well, you can do that with your phone, too. And this one's really cool. You can actually have Alexa call and then play music on your phone instead of just listening for the ringer. Yes, you're probably wondering what if it's on silent. If you have an iPhone... Well, you can use your Mac or your Apple Watch or whatever to try to use Find My. That's really your best loca- your best option. If you have an Android, though, you can use IFTTT to turn up your ringer. So if it's on silent, you can have it put your phone volume all the way up for you and then play music or then play your ringer. So pretty darn cool. It's a little more, you know, this is kind of a tech dork thing that you'll need, need <laughs> to set up. But we are going to do a tip for this on the website uh, so that you can do it, too. So. Look for that on commander.com. You want to hear my story about that? I sure do. Lost my phone the other day and um, went to find my phone. Uh, 
First, I was trying to get uh, Alexa to call the phone, and I couldn't hear it. So then I went to the find my phone part where it shows it to you on a map. Yeah. Then uh, the tablet, because I've got like three tablet computers now. Don't ask me why. But uh, (laughs) sound like Ben. (laughs) Ben knows why. It's like, like, how did I get these? Where did this pile come from? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So uh, I was on the wrong one, and I couldn't sign into Google because I didn't have my password. Of course, I didn't have my phone to verify that I, you know, that I could sign in. So I'm just like pulling my hair out, and then I, of course, remembered where it was when I um, when I got home. It was in my back pocket of my jeans. <gasps> <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> That's the best possible ending to that story. Exactly. <laughs> Poor thing. It's time now for America's newest national game show sensation, where you can play and guess at home. Is it brand new or not true? Every week, there's literally thousands of new product sites, apps, and services that are announced in the technology world. Some are destined for greatness, others not so much. Oftentimes, the products sound so crazy, outlandish, and just ridiculous, you sit back and think, what were they thinking? And before you know it, tech just created a new bazillionaire. When playing Brand New or Not True, we're going to present you, the home listener, with three product sites or ideas. It's up to you to decide which two of the three are fake and one is real. Do we have a theme, Ben? We do. Let's call it Remote Work and Gaming. Okay. I'm not sure that's a theme. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I said so. Okay. Yeah. Remote work, do you do more work or gaming? That's <laughs> no, the big well, thing. I mean, how about both? Just okay. not at the same time. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, first thing PC gamers shouldn't be the only people with the futuristic desk tech. Yeah. Okay. That's where the Cooler Master Orb X bridges the gap. It's a fully immersive, multi purpose, semi enclosed workstation designed for both gamers and professionals. The Orbex comes equipped with an automated shuffled or shuttle dome with enhanced visual and audio capabilities. For instance, the upper rack supports up to three separate monitors, only up to 27 inch in size. Surround sound speakers are also built right into the workstation so you can ditch the headphones. And let's not forget about the chair itself. It's ergonomic and adjustable with various lumbar and headrest settings. To get in, just push a single button to open the dome and hop right in. The Cooler Master Orb X comes in black and white finishes. Pricing and release dates have not yet been finalized. Okay, product number two. The line has also been blurred when it comes to gaming keyboards. I know Allie uses a gaming keyboard for work. So do I. Programmable buttons, mechanical clicky keys. It's pretty awesome. But the Corsair K125 Elite RGB mechanical gaming keyboard (laughs) takes it a step further. Yes, you can still immerse. Wait a minute, go back. Corsair. K125 Elite. K125 Elite. RGB mechanical gaming keyboard. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> that sounds like a made up name, just saying. <laughs> that sounds like a real name to me. <laughs> you can immerse your desktop in dynamic per key RGB backlighting and assign six dedicated macro keys like other gaming keyboards. But the Elite's key feature is having Alexa voice assistant integration. I'm not talking about simple compatibility. I mean the equivalent of an Echo device built directly into the keyboard. So you can give commands to adjust keyboard lighting, smart home lighting, and activate various profiles, changing the scene from gaming mode lighting to your workday lighting. Can't use your voice? Well, those macro keys can be set up as smart home routines through Alexa to control that tech including the ability to open security camera views directly on your screen with a simple push of the button. The Corsair K125 Elite RGB mechanical gaming (laughs) keyboard is available now for $259. Okay, got it. And the next product is more of a practical gadget, a compact desktop computer with an extra surprise built in, an uninterruptible power supply, or UPS, which is what keeps your computer from shutting down during power outages, your desktop, because obviously laptops don't need them. This Asus has an Intel i5 processor, eight gigs of RAM, two USB-C ports, HDMI and Ethernet port, and a single AC outlet for a monitor. So when you lose power, the computer will have anywhere from eight to 15 minutes of battery life, depending on what's running and the size of the monitor that's plugged in. That lets you at least save what you're working on to shut down just the same way a regular UPS works, but you don't have to buy this separately. This Asus Vivo Mini costs $7.99. Ooh, these are good ones, Ben. This is a good week for you. Vivo Mini. 
It was yes. having two weeks off, huh? You got all kinds of inspiration. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. You're you're writing these uh, on you in your camping trip. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm setting up a home theater at the in the woods, yeah. Orb X Simeon Game Work Computer with a chair. Uh, the second product is a keyboard. Corvair K125 Elite. There's more to that, but I can't remember. <laughs> uh, keyboard with Alexa. Pretty cool. Uh, desktop computer with uh, UPS assist to uh, to make sure that you don't lose your power or lose whatever you're working on for at least a few minutes. Um, all good ideas. Uh, I'm going to eliminate first, and it's usually, by the way, the first product that I eliminate is the correct one. So I'm just going to give you a hint there, Allie. Uh, I'm going to eliminate the Corsair Corvair, the keyboard, Corsair K125 Elite keyboard. Really, really involved uh, description. And yeah, it sounded like something that he worked on for a while. All right. So that's between the Orb X game work computer. Um, I'm going to call that just, if that's a game computer. I don't know why you'd want to do work on that. Uh, but I guess you could, you could go do work on a game computer, but... Ah, it seems like kind of no. So I guess that leaves us with the desktop computer with UPS Assist with a, from Asus. Okay? Okay. I A lot of weeks, I think everything sounds fake. This week, I think they all sound real. So this is, this is tough. Uh, I think they're all good ideas. I'm going to rule out the Corsair keyboard only because I think Amazon would want their own... I don't know if that's right. Whatever, I'm going with it. Uh, the built-in UPS is a great idea, but because Mike guessed that one, I'm gonna say it's fake. I think that Orb X is real. I think people would pay way too much money for that kind of setup. I don't see why not. I'm gonna say that's the real product. Okay. How do you know I wasn't using that keyboard on my camping trip? <gasps> <gasps> dun, dun, dun. But no, it's not real. Okay. <laughs> We sniffed one it out anyway. It sounds cool, though. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Because you can integrate Alexa and all kinds of things, but the push buttons. So. I appreciate all the details. I mean, Indeed. there was a lot of details on that one. Well. So one of us you is both right. called us out. Yeah. Okay. So who is it? Now, first of all, the, the, uh, the Cooler Master idea, it's not a computer. It's a workstation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to add the components, like the monitors and the actual computer. Okay. Which... Yes, that one is real. Oh! <laughs> nice job, Allie. Yeah, I made up the, the little Vivo. Well, it's a, the Vivo Mini is a real name of an Asus compact desktop computer, but there, no, there's Tricky. no backup battery inside. That's a good idea. Somebody's going to do that. Well, so. the UPSs are so cheap and ubiquitous now. Everybody's got one. Yeah, so. but if it was just built right in there, you didn't have to worry about yeah, it. Yeah, That's you're a good right. selling point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's or call a surge protector and UPS. That'd be uh, yeah. that would be a good selling point. There you go. All right, Ben. Good job. Great job, Allie. You sniffed it out, and so that's going to do it for this week for brand new or not true. Up next, billionaires in space. Were we impressed? I'll give you a hint. They weren't. <laughs> uh, also, scams are hitting military families hard, but they're not the only ones. It's Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from Commando.com. Welcome back to Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from Commando.com. Every week we give you the inside scoop on what's going on in tech. So you're the source of tech information for your friends and family. This week we take a look at billionaires in space. Did you guys stay up, get up really early in the morning to watch Allie? Sure didn't. <laughs> what about you, Ben? Yes and no. No, I did it not get camping. up early. He had to set up his camping TV. <laughs> no, I was home by then, but no, okay. it, it started really early. Uh -huh. I did not get up for that. However, I may have gone back and watched uh, the entire uh, presentation in its, in, yeah, in its entirety later in the day. How long was that? I don't know, two and a half hours. Okay, two and a half hours because Richard Branson spent a whole four minutes up in space. <laughs> Is that all it was? That's all it was. <laughs> he was about 50 miles above the Earth's surface, um, which, like, is that really space? I guess. Okay, fine. Uh, the real win, though, he beat Jeff Bezos up there. Mm -hmm. He's heading to space on July 20th. But... He's going 62 miles above Earth's surface. So, I don't know, counts more? They're in this whole, like, who has a bigger rocket debate, <laughs> those two. Um, 
a regular person, tourists who wanted to go up to space, paid $28 million for the seat. Wow. And then Elon Musk, of course, he's the other space billionaire. He's behind SpaceX, and they're really the leader in private space oh, industry yeah. right now. Um, in May 2020, they sent two astronauts from Kennedy Space Center. That was the first manned launch from U.S. soil since 2011. And they were the first private company to send astronauts to the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. So Branson and Bezos, they have a little catching up to do. Um a lot of people think, you know, maybe rightly so, that this isn't a great time because think about how many millions, billions of dollars they're spending on this during a time when there is a pandemic, uh, famine across the world, crazy heat waves, killing lots of things and people. So there's a lot of, man, should we really be spending, should these people be spending all this money? What do you guys think? Well, there's always going to be the optics. Yeah, it's not going to look good. Even, but I mean, quite frankly, while a lot of people were hurting during and still are during the pandemic, and I mean, these guys, Bezos, Musk, uh, they, you know, they raked it in more oh, yeah. than ever because of, you know, because of the, the shifting trends during the pandemic. Yeah, Amazon more, made more money than it ever has. I, I remember, well, I remember kind of, I was pretty young, but the race to the moon in the 60s. Yeah. All right. So comparatively, the country was in a bad situation. We had the Vietnam War. We had all the protesters. We had the assassination of JFK, mm -hmm. uh, his brother, Martin Luther King. Yeah. And I think it was a distraction for a lot of people, this race to space. So it was something to feel proud of. So I don't know if the country is embracing this race yeah. as much as they they could or should or That's would. a really, really good point. I, I wonder, I bet a lot of that is it was kind of this, let's root for USA, yeah. right? right? And yeah. so we right. can all come together and be excited about it. And now it's like, cool, which really rich guy is going to make it <laughs> yeah. to the moon It's first. not the, the communist USSR we're <laughs> right. you know, rooting right. against. It's and how how come Elon Musk isn't going to the, the moon or Because he somewhere? doesn't want to step down, I'm sure. Jeff Bezos had to step down as CEO right. so that he could, you know, just so insurance would. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you assume one thing has to do with the other because he stepped down just a few days before. Right. I mean, yeah, you can't be the CEO of a huge company and go to space and not have it be a big deal. Um of course, there's talk of tourism programs, luxury space hotels, all this stuff coming. Luxury <laughs> is really the key word. This isn't cool. We can all go to space. This is the very, very, very richest people. Yeah, and that's why, and that's why I think it's dumb that it's all being ushered in by billionaires. You know, obviously you have to have these companies run by rich people, but they're going along for the ride, making it you know this PR stunt. So, yeah. but yeah, ushering in you know with the the what's the luxury? I mean, what's that it's in space. Okay, I mean, if, what, are there going to be like amenities like your room has gravity? You know, <laughs> <laughs> maybe just really high thread count sheets. The usual, a big bathtub. Space sheets. I think mostly it's just to say, yeah, I was in space. I was in space. I yeah. We so we do a kind of question of the day um, here at Commando, and someone asked the other day, would you go up in space with you know Richard Branson? They're um, doing a sweepstakes to you could win a spot. Would you guys go? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I would. What about how you? many how, how many people could say that they went to space? Mm -hmm. Not many. Yeah, apparently, you get a little astronaut badge. Whoa, <laughs> really? Yeah, that's cool. So yeah, I'd go just for that. Yeah, I think you can I buy them on Amazon <laughs> for like nine dollars. Maybe print your own. <laughs> <laughs> so I was looking for kind of okay, what is the opposite side of this argument? And I found a really interesting editorial on Space dot com where. They acknowledged all this stuff. Yeah, it's kind of this rich boys club trying to get to space. Great. Enjoy. Have fun, guys. But I thought there was a really interesting point in there. Um, whatever way that they are getting into space, you know, who they might be, how much money they might be, they said these people are trying to do something good for humanity and the planet. They're investing in a better future. They're developing systems and technologies to break us out of the cage of gravity and allow us to open this little backwater of a planet to the rest of the universe. And, you know... I think that's kind of cool, and it's – I want to think about that a little more because, yeah, maybe there is a future where, I don't know, all of us could be in space. Absolutely. All right, it's Tech Refresh Podcast with Kim Commando and friends. One of the things we promise every week is to keep you from getting scammed. So every week we talk about a new scam that's out there that you need to watch out for. Scams are hitting the military families hard, but, of course, they're not the only ones. Yeah, instead of new this week, we're going to go more existing because, you know, we talk about – all the new and unfortunately innovative ways scammers 
come up with to take advantage of people. Kind of a sad stat from last year, though. According to the 2020 Better Business Bureau Scam Tracker Risk Report, military service members, spouses, and veterans all had higher likelihoods of losing money to scammers. The biggest factor, online purchase scams. More people bought stuff online in 2020 than a normal year. Uh, Service members and veterans were more at risk from scams involving pets and pet supplies, while military spouses were being caught up in employment scams like, you know, those fake work-from-home opportunities. Easy to figure out why, since, you know, military families can be deployed all over the place while the spouse would look for work, quick work. Now, while there was a spike in military scam victims, everyone is at risk from these types of fraud. You know, the puppy scams, you're seeing, I guess, kind of a decrease because people are going back to work now. They're not so isolated and shut in. Uh, but the employment scams are as bad as ever. So you're still going to need to watch out whoever you are. You can be a military veteran, just anyone. Watch out for scam job postings for remote work, uh, you know, fake recruiter emails. You might get a text or an email from a quote-unquote employer asking you to apply for a job at a company that you might even recognize the name of. They'll want to conduct an interview over the phone video. Once you're hired, they'll want your banking info, you know, to run a credit check, set up direct deposit. Um, Or they'll send you a big check that you need to cash and send some back, although it's going to be fake. You know, we have tips to avoid these and similar scams making the rounds right now at commando.com. Do we recommend any spam filters like for your cell phone that'll take out, you know, spam callers or even texts? Yeah, most, depending on your carrier, most of them have pretty darn good now settings Mm -hmm. that you can enable. So, yeah, I would definitely suggest either go to your carrier's website. You can even call. Sometimes that's easier just to get a walkthrough on it and say, hey, what can I do to stop spam? We've also got that on commando.com. If you search spam texts, that should get you there. And we will show you what to enable. All right. Next on Tech Refresh with Kim Commando and friends from commando.com. Hey, thanks for listening to the Tech Refresh podcast, heard exclusively on the Kim Commando Explains podcast from commando.com. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button. Yeah, just do that really quick while you're thinking about it. We would love to be on your device every single week with these podcasts. Also get you the special feature podcast this week. Well, we go back to Rico Danielson. He's an he's a security expert uh, and he knows his stuff. We talk about the Internet of Things, what things are tracking you, what they know about you, how we know they know about you. And also, Rico talked to an actual hacker. All right. So in person, like talk to an actual hacker, what that was all about. Now it's Ben's product review time and a camping trip. Yeah. So we're going to talk. This is going to be multifaceted because (laughs) I took a few days off, you know, to to get some. My wife and I could go to our favorite camping site at the Grand Canyon. Uh huh. So a couple of things I had to take into account here. It's kind of a primitive campsite, not a lot of amenities, but I brought along a power station to test out. Okay. that I'm actually going to have on uh, the radio show this week to do the full review on. But uh, think of this as a small generator, but instead of having an engine you know, that takes gasoline to run, this, this gadget is basically a massive backup battery. Okay. Okay. It's called the Jackery Solar Generator 1500 Solar because it also comes with four uh, folding solar panels. I bet you were the only person at the Grand Canyon with solar panels. <laughs> well, I was just the only that. person at the Grand Canyon with a lot of this stuff, yeah, <laughs> which I'll get to. So you can, yeah, you know, I mean, it's big enough, I'll uh, put it in perspective, you can charge your phone with it more than 130 times Ooh. without having to recharge it. Wow. wow. Uh, you can power appliances. You know, instead of bringing the regular Weber grill we usually take, we brought the George Foreman grill to plug into it. It, <laughs> it, it works. So, but that that's not the highlight, okay? You know, I've been, uh, I've been a, Phoenix Suns fan for nearly three decades. And wouldn't you know it, planned this camping trip months ago, and the Suns go and make the NBA Finals for the first time in 28 years. Oh, man. Well, (laughs) I wasn't going to change the trip, so I just brought the home theater with me. You know, I I set up next to the tent a $60 10-foot by 10-foot canopy, a 100-inch projector screen made for said canopy, I got for 15 bucks at Walmart. Wow. Oh. I didn't even know it existed until I you know, went and looked it up. A cheap projector that I already had, an Apple TV, and, of course, everything powered by this massive Jackery power station. And I had just enough of a 3G signal on my iPhone to turn it into a hotspot for the Apple TV so I could connect and stream 
Game one of the finals live from the campsite. Can we just take a moment and picture this? <laughs> <laughs> ben? Well, we got to go to the show notes because we're going to put an image in the show notes. Ben yeah. at the Grand Canyon <laughs> with his projector. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, my review of the uh, the Jackery solar generator is already up at commando.com, and I do have a photo oh, of perfect. my setup there, okay, too, there you so go. you can check it out now. Uh, that set, and which I'll talk about in more detail on the show, not cheap. This set with the power station and the four folding solar panels – 2700 bucks. Whoa. Yeah. Wowee. Yeah. Yeah. It was either that or watch it on my phone. But how long did you get? <laughs> how, how much TV did you get? I mean, you watched oh, the game, and then didn't you guys watch some movies, too? Yeah, we brought movie? Avatar along, too. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, it, that That's didn't a good drain six, the, six, seven hours, It's right? the appliances that... Uh, the, the washing machine, dryer. Yeah, yeah. No, that George Foreman. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Foreman, actually. That's, uh, you plug that in. We cooked burgers on it. 400 degrees, and it was about a percent a minute. So ran it for like 20, 25 minutes, and it was down to about 75%. So the, the appliances actually drain mm. it, especially the high heat ones like that. Yeah. The TV, the, you know, or the TV, the projector with the Apple TV and stuff, it was not draining very fast at all. It can, it can power the basic electronics for a long time. Before I make fun of you too much about <laughs> the George Foreman, uh, is there still a fire ban? You can't have fire, right? Yes, you yeah. can have propane. Okay. But yeah, no yeah. open flames. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, no charcoal. Yeah. Currently. Well, actually, pretty useful then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, let's face it. It happens. Sometimes there are emergencies. You get in a car accident. What would you do if a robot showed up to take care of you, Allie? Yeah, there is a pretty awesome new robot um, all around South England, but we can expect it'll be here soon. It's called Lucas 3, and it's a CPR robot. So it automates that life-saving chest compression, which is actually pretty hard for people to sustain, especially, you know, think about an accident scene. If there are only two paramedics, maybe there are a couple people trying to do CPR and chest compression on a bunch of people can get pretty difficult. So Lucas can start up in just about seven seconds and it works through Bluetooth. And so once the paramedics arrive, you know, see what the scene is, seven seconds for Lucas to take over manual compression of someone's chest. Wow. This is pretty darn cool. Um, so far, it is with one ambulance service. Lucas costs about $17,000, um, and they just purchased 28 more because, man, apparently it's really working. So this is a pretty pretty darn cool thing. I would be really interested to see if these make their way here um, and how people respond to it. But I would think, you know, if you're in an emergency situation, you just want to get through it. Yeah. So I, I think I'd be okay with it. What about you guys? I think you'd have to get used to seeing something like that first. Otherwise, yeah. they might uh, make a, a critical situation a little more chaotic if you don't know what, what that <laughs> – Why is this robot on ro- me? What is that robot's intention? You know? <laughs> but think of it, uh, it once it be- does become normal is it gives the other medical personnel you know, time to do other things. They've got to right. think about other things or give oxygen and breaths and all of that yep, stuff. exactly. By the way, uh, I still remember my CPR training from probably 10 plus years ago. It's Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. Yeah. That's the beat that you're supposed yep. to use. Yep. All right. I didn't it, learn that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I, we had a good teacher, let me tell you. <laughs> And we got listener email. I'm going to give you that email address in just a moment, but what do we got? Yeah, Don wrote us. So, Mike, uh, we talked about audiobooks and all the ways we like to listen. And Don had a really great tip that we missed. He said he suffered from eye damage a couple years ago and had to go to audiobooks. He said, wish I had done it years ago. I now read faster and with better comprehension. I agree. Audiobooks are awesome. Okay. And here is a little known and fantastic trick that Don wanted us to know. On the Kindle app, you can install that on your phone or tablet, and then you install the Alexa app on the same device. You don't need an Echo. You can just install the Alexa app, and then Alexa will find your books. You can choose a book, and Alexa will read it for you. Really? Yeah. That's crazy Isn't that awesome? You can choose the accent or language, he says, and then he said total cost, the cost of the Kindle book. So nothing extra. That's really cool. That's that's really cool. It is. Thank you, Don. I'm going to try that out. Yeah. Hey, if you'd like to comment about the podcast, good or bad, mostly good, send us an email to podcast at commander.com. Again, that's podcast at commander.com. On behalf of Kim, Ben, and Allie, I'm Mike, and we'll see you next time. And for the latest digital news and articles anytime, go to commander.com with a K. That's K-O-M-A-N-D-O.